and it's actually step five, it's going to get real confusing, and I'm sorry. But step four, we'll call this step 4.1. No, we'll just call it step four. Um, so uh, we, we, we you know, went through a little exciting process of getting the, this thing back in sync. It went out of sync accidentally, and I had to fix it. So uh, we, we're now back in sync, and um, um, I need to get rid of all these locked tracks here because um, it, this is a dialog track, this is ambience, and I'm going to want to move this stuff around. Um, here's how we do it. Uh, I don't want to, if I select this one, like for instance, if I select this, and I go lock in time. Look, it says lock in time. It's not checked, but clearly it's locked in time. What is going on? Well, uh, possibly because I've got this stuff soloed right now. So let me, let me go ahead and turn off solo. I'll go ahead and mute my reference track right now because I, you know, I got it in sync. Well, I don't need to be listening to my reference track on top of the tracks I'm going to be working with here in a minute. But okay, now, now I seem to have access to my, my tracks here. So if I select this, it says lock in time. I seem to have everything selected. Jeez. Okay, so I select this. I click lock in time. It's unlocked that track. But look, all of these are still locked. Oh my god, I might have to go through and unlock all of these. No. Lock this back in time. Um, what I need to do is select, go ahead, track, select all clips and track. Now I can go and unlock this in one fell swoop bang all right so next step is um, we need to get rid of dual mono tracks um, let's remember that sometimes when we record uh, off a shotgun mic uh, it, it, it winds up on left and right of a stereo recording it happens all the time it happened to me right here um, and uh, we want to get rid of that stuff because stereo tracks um, Stereo mono tracks do absolutely nothing for us. Uh, it doesn't make anything sound like stereo. It doesn't make it sound better. Um, so it's useless. We need to get rid of this stuff. You know, if you know any editing I do on this particular uh, audio here, is uh, I'd have to duplicate it up here, and it would still get me nothing. Okay. So let's just get rid of it. Now we've got a couple of choices here. I'm going to go ahead and scale this down so that we can. Uh, I can get access to my junk tracks here. If I don't feel confident of just going, oh, well, first we got to figure out, is this in fact a dual mono track? Sorry, I almost skipped a step here. Let's listen to this here. I'm going to set my end point in, and I'm going to set an out point here, out, and I'm going to loop this, so I, I'm just going to work on these two tracks. Um, this is this was imported as uh, left and right. Okay, you'll notice that this has the master two thirty three and master two thirty three one. That's because uh, they have the same name because originally it was a stereo track. Now it's split it up into two mono tracks, and it's added this little one. Um, this is left and right. What I need to do is figure out is this the same recording. Sometimes, uh, you know, what we'll have on a recording, a stereo recording, is in the left we'll have the shotgun mic, and in the right we'll have a stereo, or we'll have a mix of lavaliers, and it's recording the same thing, and sometimes, if the, especially if the field mixer guy's, you know, doing a good job, we're going to see a very similar waveforms, okay, so similar that it might be hard to tell that they are actually unique recordings. But there is a surefire way to figure it out real fast, okay? And that is what we're going to do next. <clears throat> You'll notice that, uh, you know, all I need to do is basically invert the phase of this audio. Um, I, I could explain it to you again, but if you remember the wave, if wave theory, uh, wave cancellation, if I've got the wave going up and then down, and I take that same wave and then just invert it, and then add it together, I'm going to get zero. It's just going to, it's going to add up to nothing. Um, if, if that makes zero sense to you, uh, let's just follow this process here. This right here is called a polarity reverse. That means it's just going to totally invert the wave. It's going to like turn in the sock inside out. Uh, you know, that's not a great analogy, but it, it's going to work for us right here. Um, all you need to know is, is if this is an exact copy of this, when I invert this one, 
I'm going to get total silence. Let's see if that's what actually happens. So I'm going to hit play. We got some sound. Oh, you know what might help if I solo these tracks? Okay, so I'm just hearing these two. I don't need to be hearing all this other stuff on any other track. I got this track here. It's going to get in the way of, of hearing absolute silence. So <clears throat> solo, solo, these two tracks that I'm going to check for, uh, whether they're uh, dual mono tracks. I'm going to hit play. Okay, clearly I'm hearing some stuff. And I'm going to invert one. Ready? Where'd the sound go? Where did the sound go? Well, you'll notice that it goes back here and it gets a little bit of this one and we hear something. But this is zeroed out. We've got levels. It's obviously playing sound. The computer knows that sound is being played, but we don't hear anything because it's phased to zero. These are exact copies of each other. We don't want that. We want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. Oops. I'm going to grab this one. And uh, I can do one of two things. I can do this. That's kind of scary. Okay. Um, what else I could do is I could just drag this to a jump track and kind of keep it hidden there and safe in case I want to come back to this and use it for something else. Okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it to a jump track. Now, here's junk one. All right. What I want to do is make sure I, I keep it in the same sync that I had before. So if I hold the shift key down while I move, it's going to lock into its, you know, its original position. So I'm going to drag this down to junk one, let go. It's on a junk track. I'm going to mute that track. So I don't, I don't want to hear anything on my junk track. I'm just going to be throwing junk in there. I don't want to be hearing it. So that's it. We found uh, that's a technique of how to find a dual mono track and what to do with it once you found it. Um, let's see if we can find another one real quick here. Um, I'm going to unsolo these. And uh, this looks like a stereo track here. Um, I'm going to solo these two. I'm going to check to see if these two tracks are exact copies of one another. I'm going to go ahead and start here and in. and oop got to hit the other key in and out I like to give a little bit of this well we're not gonna be hearing it but all right let's hit play and see what happens okay we definitely got audio okay how do I know if this is a uh, stereo track I'm gonna invert the polarity of one of them and see what happens look at that I'm still hearing something I'm still hearing something. I can switch. I can invert this one. These, in fact, are not. See, you'll notice that this says tone, tone one. This was recorded left and right. It was imported, but there are not the same things recorded on each track. Now, what I need to do is just figure out what's recorded on it. I'm going to go ahead and just solo this one all by itself and hit play I got I got nothing really here look at this little jumping around a little bit but what I hear is just it sounds like the sound of just the electronics that's just garbage it's garbage I don't need this so I'm gonna select it make sure that um, I, I see the whole thing nope at no point is audio appear on this anywhere I feel confident I can just delete this. I'm going to hit, oh, it, <laughs> hey, that's pretty cool. I had a range selected. You see that? When I hit delete, it just deleted what was in that range. So let's get rid of this range. Highlight the clip and hit delete, and bang, it's gone. All right. Well, that's it. That's how we do it. We need to go through this whole thing, every little inch of this uh, entire sequence and get rid of all dual mono <laughs> tracks okay well that was step four point one point two five no that was just step four I think we're on four next up well what else do we need to do let's see if I can think of a step five